So in this session, I'm going to discuss with you uh, one of the very important organelles in a eukaryotic cell, what we call nucleus, because it is the nucleus which is responsible for all the functions which goes on within the cell. And uh, it is also, it has what we call genetic material, which is responsible for taking information from one generation to another, and also deciphering information to perform different functions within the cell in the same generation. Okay, so <clears throat> this had been studied in greater detail from time to time over the last 60 to 70 years, you know. To begin with, it was the, it was discovered that the genetic material lies as thread-like structures in the nucleus, what we call chromosomes. Then what chromosome contains, that question was answered, that chromosomes are made up of proteins and DNA, which is the genetic material. I mean, when the chromosome was found to be made up of two macromolecules like protein and the nucleus, the question was asked that whether it is the protein which is the genetic material or the DNA which is the genetic material, the question was answered and it was found that it is the DNA which is the genetic material and which is responsible for having information for cellular function in the same generation and taking the genetic information from one generation to another generation. Then the question that what DNA has, so its structure, its uh, uh, chemical composition was deciphered. The DNA has uh, four bases, ATGC, and it is this sequence which determines the kind of protein is to be synthesized within the cell mediated by another nucleotide what we call RNA you know which I discussed with you in the previous lectures okay so that's how the concept has been building up to define this uh, 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 genetic information which is responsible for uh, uh, for performing functions, cellular functions, and uh, taking the genetic information from one generation to another, okay? <clears throat> Today, uh, the whole, it has undergone a whole lot of change uh, in the sense that uh, genetic material is not defined uh, in terms of chromosomes, in terms of uh, uh, DNA, but in another term has been given what we call genome. Okay. So, so genome, um, first let us see uh, what, is, what is genome, how genome has been defined. You know? So in today's context, basically, Genome uh, is genome represents in totality the hereditary information. It means the genome represents in totality the genetic information contained in an organism which is responsible for its functions in same generation and taking it from one generation to another generation. And this is coded onto or coded by DNA in almost all organisms except some viruses where the genetic material is RNA. So barring this 
a small group of uh, living forms, what we call RNA viruses. The other group, which is DNA genetic material and bacteria, plants, and animals. So it is uh, entirely this molecule which is responsible for the uh, the transmission of uh, genetic information from one generation to another and also for carrying out the cellular function in the same generation. And also when we say genome, genome covers basically uh, the gene part of the DNA and also the sequences which are not coding for any protein. Okay, so genome covers basically the coding part of the uh, DNA and the non-coding part of the DNA. Okay, and today we know that in the or in the genome of an organism, the coding part of the DNA is very very less. The majority of the genome or the DNA is not coding for any protein, and we will address this question that what for it is there if it is not coded for any protein you know? so so to conclude that what is genome so genome is the one which is responsible for hereditary um, uh, hereditary aspect of the genetics and also for carrying out functions cellular functions in the same generation and also what is responsible for it? So it is the DNA, which is responsible for, uh, the, for, uh, for, for this. In all organisms, except a small group of viruses where the genetic material is RNA. And also genome refers to basically uh, the coding part of the uh, DNA and the non-coding part. So that's how uh, the genome has been defined today. So, so basically, if you look at one definition, the genome is the entire collection of genes and all other function and non-functional DNA sequences in an organism in a haploid set of chromosomes. It includes structural genes, regulatory genes, and non-functional nucleotide sequences. You know? So basically, genome is the entire collection of the genes that are functional or non-functional DNA sequences in an organism in a haploid set of um, uh, set of chromosomes. You know, in eukaryotes, you have minimum two sets of chromosomes. They are diploids. You know, so when we talk of the genome, we are we are talking about the the entire DNA content of a haploid cell. Okay, now that has basically three types of uh, uh, three sets of uh, sequences. One, what we call structural genes. Now, these uh, genes, they code for specific proteins or they code for mRNA, tRNA, or uh, snRNAs or rRNAs. So uh, that is the structural genes component of the genome. Then functional sequences. You know, which don't code for a protein, but they are important, like regulatory sequences, promoter genes, and operator sites. Now, these are, they are also part of the genome and gene. And these are the sequences which are responsible for regulating the expression of genes in a eukaryotic cell. Why this is required? Today, we know that entire genome of a cell does not express itself uh, all the time in all the cell types. 
It's only a very tiny part of the genome which expresses itself in a specific cell type, you know? So <clears throat> what makes this phenomenon to occur is these uh, regulatory sequences, operators and uh, promoters, which make a specific gene to express at a specific time in a specific cell type, you know? And of course, then there's another component of the, uh, of the genome with, or genes which express themselves uh, all the time in all the cell types. That is the uh, genes which are responsible for maintaining the cell life or they are involved in cellular functions, basal cellular functions, uh, which are needed for cell to be alive. So there are two components of or two types of genes. One are what we call constitutive genes and another we call the inducible genes or the regulatory genes which, which make a cell to behave in a specific manner in a multicellular, multi-organ organisms. Now, and then you have the functional, non-functional sequences, okay? Like intron, repetitive sequences. You know, in a eukaryotic gene, you have the gene organization is in the form of exons and introns. You know, and these introns are removed. It's as a part of post-transcriptional processing. And then you have all exons coming together to form the, the functional messenger RNA. You know? So, so non-functional sequences are there in the genome in the form of introns and the repetitive sequences. Now, it is this part of repetitive sequences which constitute a large part of the genome when we look at it in a while. You know? So, what we have done, we have tried to define the genome of an organism which resides in the nucleus predominantly, and it has three components. The structural genes, functional genes, and non-functional genes, okay? Now, <clears throat> if we look at uh, genome, in general, in all living, living organisms, it represents their hereditary material and is formed of DNA. To summarize what I've been talking about. If we look at in prokaryotes, in prokaryotes, genomic DNA forms a single circular chromosome. This is what happens in bacteria. And this is a naked DNA, basically. They, 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 there is no protein association in this. And uh, it floats around in the nucleoid region of bacterial cell. So there is no nucleus, as I mentioned earlier, in a bacterial cell. So the genome of a bacterial cell includes the DNA, which is single circular DNA, which is not associated with any protein. As against this, what you see in a eukaryotic cells, it is the DNA which is uh, present in an organelle, like nucleus, and this DNA is um, associated with basic proteins, what we call histones. Okay, so it's not negative; it is associated with proteins and this uh, forms a long chromatin fiber-like structures or network, you know, wh wh what we call chromosomes. And th they can be seen during cell division, viruses and neurons. The chromosomes, okay, very clearly, you know. So, <clears throat> so talking about genome is referred as DNA in prokaryotes. It is a single circular DNA, naked, not associated with any protein, and floats around in the cytoplasm in the nucleoid region. Whereas in eukaryotes, uh, it is associated, it is means 
the DNA is associated with uh, basic proteins, what we call histone proteins. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> they form a fibrous network, long thread like structures that known as chromosomes. Okay, and these chromosomes can be seen uh, in a condensed form uh, during cell division. The number of chromosomes vary from organism to organism, but they, starting from plants, animals, humans, the genetic material or the genome resides on chromosomes. Okay. Now, this is the very interesting question, uh, which I was uh, referring to in the previous uh, uh, lecture that when it is the same genome or same DNA, same means uh, DNA is DNA, consists of uh, uh, ATGC bases and the backbone and, uh, and the phosphatase. But then uh, the same DNA manifests itself in simple forms like bacteria to simple animals and plants to multicellular, multi-organ organisms like, uh, 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 like uh, uh, humans, up to humans, if you see it. So how this complexity in living forms arise? That's the this question. So <clears throat> this question was addressed. And first it was thought that it is the DNA contents. The, Maybe the simple forms has less DNA as compared to the, the complex uh, living forms. They may be having tons of DNA, lot more DNA. So that the complexity is arising because of the total DNA content. That was one. Then this question was thrashed out completely. And if you look at this, you know, uh, <sighs> If you look at different forms like bacteria, you know, uh, like uh, Haemophilus influenzae, to yeast, to plants, Arabidopsis, to insects, lesser uh, complex than um, the mouse and the human, human beings. So this is the sort of uh, representative living forms representing different levels of complexity structural complexity and functional complexities. Okay, now if you look at the, <clears throat> the total DNA contents starting from bacteria, 1.8 million base pairs to 3.2 billion base pairs in human beings. Okay, and if you see, compare 2.6 billion base pairs in mouse, to 3.2 billion base pairs in humans. The difference is just 0.6 you know, uh, million base pairs. But this does not represent the complexity existing between mouse and humans. Okay. Similarly, if you look at the Drosophila versus the 137 million to 2.6 billion of mouse, and so on and so forth, if you see. So definitely it is not the DNA content which is responsible for the complexity which is seen in the living forms. You know. And also this point gets strengthened if you look at the chromosome numbers. Like in a bacteria, you have single, E. coli also single chromosome. To yeast, if you see, there are 32, Arabidopsis 12. Uh, uh, and around one it is 12, and then uh, Arabidopsis uh, is 10, Drosophila 8 chromosome, and mouse is 40 chromosomes, and humans are 46. So again, if you see uh, the chromosome numbers between mouse and humans, only difference of six chromosome, you know, but the complexity between mouse and human bodies are, uh, is a lot more, you know. Okay, and if you look at the number of genes in these organisms, 
today because the genomes have been sequenced and uh, annotated and we know that uh, how many genes are present uh, in the in these organisms so if you if you look at the bacteria has uh, 1700 like hemophilus influenzae has 1700 genes to 25000 genes in humans so that is the range in the total number of genes between say bacteria to humans so again if you look at uh, or, or if you compare interestingly mouse and humans both have 25000 genes 25000 genes you know but again the the, the complexities uh, are not mentioned when you have same number of genes, um, functional genes, then there should not be this, this much of difference. A mouse looks like mouse and a human looks like human. You know? So the point I'm trying, trying to make is that uh, it is something else which is responsible for the complexity. It's the same DNA. It is the, not the content to bacteria which is responsible for the complexities which it gives to an organism. Uh, probably it is not even the gene composition. If you look at the mouse and the humans, they have similar number of genes, 25,000, 25,000. But then how the gene product, now we know that a gene can code for a protein or different kinds of protein by alternative means of processing. Starting from uh, starting from splicing to uh, to to, to post translational modifications, post transcription modifications, and even uh, the, the the protein which when it is in the cell, it, there is protein and protein interaction, and the same protein performs different functions. So it is these kind of interactions which are probably. Uh, uh, maybe more responsible for uh, cells to behave differently in different organisms and give different sort of, uh, uh, as a whole, complexities to the organism. But it needs still to be understood. You know, and this is a very, very burning question of today to, to understand that what is, what is this which is responsible for this complexity, if not, the DNA content, the gene number, and the chromosome number. If that is not then what? How the same DNA manifests itself in different cell type differently and gives different um, complexities. So, <clears throat> if we look at the eukaryotic genome, you know. Uh, the nucleus is heart of the cell, which serves as the main distribution feature of the eukaryotic cell. It is an organelle submerged in sea of turbulent cytoplasm, which has the genetic information encoding the past history and future prospects of the cell. Nucleus contains many threadlet coiled structure, which remains suspended in the nucleoplasm, which are known as chromatin substrates. Okay, this is, I have read out a definition which is given for eukaryotic genome. So in this, what is referred is the chromatin. Chromatin-like structure which forms uh, the, the, the thread-like structure we call them as, <coughs> as uh, uh, chromosomes. Okay. So what is this chromatin being referred here? It's a complex between DNA and proteins. You know, chromatin is a complex between DNA and protein, which constitutes the chromosome. Okay, and uh, major proteins which are involved in chromatin, we call them as histone proteins, basically, and uh, <clears throat> they have a prominent role to play. That is histone proteins I'm talking about. And basically, function of um, chromatin is the packaging of DNA, you know, in the form of uh, uh, packaging the DNA uh, into chromosome and allowing its function, it, allowing it to carry on with its functions, like 
replication of DNA and that the expression of the genes, you know, or controlling the gene expression. So chromatin facilitates all this, you know. So to summarize what I'm, I have talked here in this uh, slide is define the eukaryotic genome, which is referred as chromatin, which is a complex of protein and DNA, and uh, which is predominantly histone proteins we call, you know, and this basically complex is required or facilitates the functions of DNA in terms of whether it is replication of DNA, which is a very important aspect of its function. When one cell divides into two, the DNA also has to replicate and double its, itself to go to the two daughter cells. So DNA replication is very, very important. And then the expression of the, of the genetic information residing in them in terms of gene expression. So this complex of uh, protein and, uh, and uh, DNA in chromatin facilitates this, all this pattern. So this is what actually structurally, if you see, you know, uh, these are the chromatin material. This is nuclear envelope, nuclear pores. You know, if you take it out here, you know, it is the nucleosome, as you know, the so, uh, the, the chromosome or chromatin organizes itself in the form of nucleosomes. And what is nucleosome? It is the sort of BDD structure. You know, the protein uh, core. Core is made up of protein, and the DNA coils around itself. You know, and this is what is what we are seeing here. You know, this is the core, which is the stone proteins, and this is the thread of DNA, which is coiling around itself. And then you have another another uh, histone complex with DNA. So you have this kind of complex generated wherein you have the linker DNA which connects the two beads and this is the histone complex. This is another histone complex and this is the DNA which connects the two, you know, is called as linker DNA. So like that it organizes and the whole thing is in, can be seen in the form of a condensed chromosome during uh, mitosis cell division, you know. So the chromosome basically has a center or what we call centromere, and these are the arms, you know. And at the end, you have this structure that we call telomere. You know? uh, further, if you go into this is uh, the uh, the, 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 the structure seen during cell division uh, clearly uh, showing the central ear, you know, the person's microscopic picture, you know, so clearly this structure can be seen, and then you have these telomeric regions at the ends of the arms of the, of the, of the, uh, of the chromosome. And the significance of this telomere region of the DNA is that it helps or it provides stability during uh, the division of the cell or the DNA replication, you know, and the integrity of the chromosome. So uh, it integrity in the sense that when the, uh, the, the cell divides, as I mentioned, and then the DNA is replicated. So uh, the, uh, if this region is not there, the, the Chromosome tend to reduce in size with success of divisions, and and if if this is not retained or the size of the chromosome is not retained, uh, one would see progressively in daughter cells the size of uh, the arm will be reduced, and it will have a lot of implications. So nature has provided this mechanism which retains the integrity of the chromosome while DNA is replicating during. Uh, cell division. So, so uh, this is very, very important uh, aspect of it. So, as I mentioned there, you know, uh, the chromatin, chromatin organizes itself into like uh, the stone proteins, structural proteins, what we call packing proteins, and uh, non histone proteins. Non histone proteins are those which are associated with regulation and other functions of the chromatin, okay? So, uh, 
Uh, uh, so, and nucleosome, I already explained to you, this is what happens, you know, uh, this is the core of the stones, stone proteins, linker, you know, or uh, uh, linker DNA, which is where the H1, there are five kinds of the stone protein. So I'm not going to the details, you may be aware, but then the point I'm trying to make here is, just to give you an idea to be with you that uh, the very very salient features of uh, uh, the uh, the current concept of uh, uh, the genome. You know? uh, this is the core where you have uh, the four, and on another side another four, so eight. You know, and this is the linker, the stone. So that's how the DNA coils around itself. You know and the histone proteins. That's the little bit of uh, chemistry on that. So, <clears throat> we have uh, two kinds of uh, chromatin, euchromatin and heterochromatin. It is very important to understand. So, basically, euchromatin is the uncoiled and active part of the chromatin. You know, when I say active, active means when the chromatin opens up, then it undergoes active uh, transcription or the expression of uh, genes which are located in that part, which has become uncoiled. Okay. And heterochromatin uh, is the one which remains condensed and inactive. So the genome you will find in a cell either in the euchromatin form or heterochromatin form. Euchromatin is the one which is uh, which is uh, uh, active transcriptionally, and heterochromatin is inactive transcriptionally. Okay, why? Because one is opened up and another one remains condensed. Uh, uh, basically, as I mentioned, in eukaryotic genome, you have uh, uh, you have uh, uh, coding path, the regions of the sequences which code for a specific gene or set of genes, and then you have non-coding, uh, non-coding uh, part of the genome. And that non-coding part of the genome is, is the one which we call repetitive DNA. Okay, repetitive DNA. Okay, so what is this repetitive DNA if you look at? You know, this now we know after, after the genome has been sequenced and uh, analyzed bioinformatically, this information has evolved that. Uh, uh, there is different categories of uh, repetitive DNA. You have highly repetitive DNA, which is satellite DNAs, middle repetitive DNA, which is tandem repeats or interspersed retrotransposomes. And then in that, these kind of uh, RRNA genes, VNTRs, STRs, and uh, ALU and L1, you know, science and lines one. You know. So this is different kinds of repetitive DNA, which is seen in the genome of eukaryotic cells or eukaryotes in general, mm. you know. <clears throat> now, very interestingly, if you see here, uh, the, in, the information which has been generated by looking at the genome and its sequences and annotations done, that in general, the, I'm making these statements that vast majority of eukaryotic genome does not encode for functional genes. Vast majority of the genome does not code for functional genes. For example, if you look at uh, the, uh, the, and the, in general, if we have to see that it is only two to 10% of the genome which codes for uh, proteins, two to 10. It means 90 to 98% genome 
is not equivalent. Okay. And of course, some of them, uh, you know, code for pseudogenes, you know, this is again part of uh, non coding codes. So, what it brings us to, and uh, that the, the, the coding part is very, very less, and non coding part is more. What is the function of this non coding? Because a living cell does not gain something which it does not require. By uh, law of natural selection, uh, things which are not required are eliminated from the organisms. So, so the fact that the large part of the genome is non-functional today, we say it's non-functional. You know, but still it is retained by cell. It means that it is performing definitely some function which today we don't understand clearly. We have some explanations, some rules have been assigned to some of these repetitive DNAs, but then still some clarity has to come. So it's not the question uh, why they are there. Only thing is we don't understand the, 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 the reason of their presence in the genome, uh, which needs to be understood. And these are the areas for future research to decipher the role of these uh, pseudogenes. Uh, this is another, uh, I just put a definition you can go through functional chromatin. Uh, is that the function of the chromatin is to carry out the genetic information from one generation to another by encoding the past history and the future prospects of the cell. DNA being the only permanent component of chromatin is the sole genetic material of eukaryotes. It never leaves the cell, thus maintaining the heredity of the cell. I mean, that's how it is. So to conclude, actually, what I have tried to do is to define you or to make you understand when we say the genome of an organism, so what all it contains. Uh, I mean, what all uh, should be included in that. Uh, what all has been included uh, based on information available today. Okay, so genome of an organism refers to the genetic material or the one which is responsible for heredity. And secondly, the DNA. It's the, the, the material is DNA in all organisms except a small group of RNA viruses. You know, and it goes for functional uh, genes, and it consists of repetitive DNA and everything I have, I have discussed. So, okay, so with this, I conclude this session. Thank you very much.